Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. That's tiny. It is tiny. And it's inexpensive and low power as well. Inexpensive but powerful enough? Yeah, it's powerful enough. That was the experiment that we did. We are running the same software we run in the data center on these low power boards. And we're trying to see how well it performs. And it actually performs remarkably well. So like server level stuff. Server level stuff. So we're running server 2008 on the on these boards and we're running uh, Microsoft applications that we typically run in the data center. And why would you do this? Well because these boards are low power and inexpensive. And so we've uh, built an experiment right here which is to, to take 50 of these boards, put them in a rack and turn it into a low power server. And I can show you the server but you could take it into your office plug it into the outlet in your office, it doesn't need special cooling, and it doesn't actually make all that much heat or noise, and so it's a lot more efficient than a data center server, which is a very noisy, very power intensive uh, object. But what about performance? The performance is not as good, by no means. I mean, it's a fraction of what you get out of server processor, but uh, you can just have more of these in a data center, because most of the data center workloads are extremely parallel, and so having more servers works fine for handling the workload. And because each one of these is so much more power efficient than the data center servers in the aggregate, you save a lot of power and He's, much well, more efficient. Not just on power, but like what's the uh, initial investment for like putting the, uh, assembling one of these? Uh, very low. These are, you know, roughly $100 boards. Wow. With everything? That's with the processor and the memory. I don't think it's the disk as well, but so uh, right. much more for disk these days. And it'll get cheaper. And it'll get cheaper. And cheaper, smaller, faster? As usual, yeah, these actually have SSDs on them instead of disks, just as an experiment. So those got more expensive, but in the future, those will get cheaper too. But they're also, uh, I'd imagine, drawing less power. I don't think that that's actually true. The, the, the laptop disks, which is what we used in the other ones, are actually very power efficient. So this was done as an experiment? Yeah, it's done as an experiment. We have one of the racks with the disks and one of the racks with the uh, SSDs. We wanted to compare the reliability and the performance of the two. And how did... Fine. Yeah, we what did you find? We don't have enough data yet. No, not enough data? None of them have failed. <laughs> well, none of them have failed. That's that's pretty... Either, uh, the, one, either the disks or the SSDs. So, and, what are you, and what are you running through them? Are you running any... I mean, you, you've got the, the operating have, system, etc. We but. have the operating system. We don't have very disk-intensive workloads. So the main workload we're running is Search, which runs entirely out of core. You don't want a page. You don't want to run off disk because you have terrible response time. So, go ahead. Let me show you some more of the... Uh, Please. So, um, I'm with you. Okay. So this is half of what we have. This is 25 of the boards. You, know, you see they're all just sort of stacked up. If you put your hand up here, you see the temperature is actually quite reasonable in spite of the fact that they're all there. The only fans we have are actually on the power supplies themselves in there. And you know, we can run with the door open and no cooling in this, in this room. This is not a machine room by any means. So, so this is one, one of the experiments we did. The, sure. other, the other experiment we did is to take advantage of the fact that these are laptop processors and have low power states like sleep. And so in a data center, there are a lot of machines sitting idle, and you need that for handling capacity. So, you know, if there's a big surge the day after Thanksgiving, you know, taxes are due or something like that, you need the machines in the data center. You can't just uh, get away without them. So you have the machines there, and they're not doing anything. Um, the current processors people use in data centers consume 70% of the power idle as they do when they're running full out. And so you're basically sitting there burning energy. And so what we did is we said these are um, laptop processors, so let's put them into sleep when they're not uh, being used. And so we built a cluster, we're running search on there, we're running the same search code, and we have a controller which basically looks at the workload that's coming in and says, how many of these machines do I actually need to handle this workload? And what do I think the workload's going to be a small time into the future so that I have enough time to bring machines up or down? And if the answer is I need more machines, I'll bring some of them out of sleep. If I have too many machines and they're sitting idle and I don't think I'm going to need them 30 seconds from now, I'll put them into sleep. And our goal is to sort of maintain the service level agreement for search, which is to handle 99% of the queries in 200 milliseconds or less, and minimize the amount of power that we need to do that. Now, has that experiment been successful? Yeah, actually, I think it's been pretty successful. Um, it's a little hard to see over this guy's book. You can get in in a second, and I can show you the, uh, the experiment. The data? Yeah. Well, I, th I think, you know, I'm looking at the, the charts there, I mean, how long have you been... You know, running these particular scenarios? Uh, a couple days. 
Yeah, sort of. Just a couple of days. Just a couple of days. We won't, we won't, you know, we're running a single canned workload from search, so there's a long way to go before you actually turn this into something that you could deploy on a real property. But the results are pretty encouraging. We can be uh, very good about predicting what's going on. Then it's possible to power the machines down and bring them back up in a reasonable amount of time in a controller, and that you can build this kind of closed-loop system to actually minimize the amount of power. So it's an encouraging experiment, but it's you know just the start of, of uh, building something that works in a real data center. Looks like you're off to a good start. Hope so. I, I, I it's not hot. I don't feel the heat even even standing this close. No, actually, uh, nothing. The, just barely the, the hot. So, oh, um, you've got it. Is this yeah, real time? Yeah, these are real time. These are another uh, product that came out of research. These are wireless sensors that um, measure the temperature and the humidity. You can see there are three different points there. They go up there to a wireless transmitter. Okay. Microsoft actually has these in many of our data centers on the real machines. Oh, these are the, these, this, are, these wireless transmitters here. They came out of research uh, a couple of year or two ago, and they're actually being used in many of our data centers. All right. So we're getting real time data. Well, we have the real time data here. So you can see at the bottom of the rack where the cool air is, it's 25 degrees in C, and it's only about nine degrees hotter up there. And you know the heat is basically traveling up these sure. channels. So this is the rack that's standing out. This is the rack that's in the cabinet. It's a little cooler. Actually, it's a little hotter. This is probably a bad sensor. It doesn't seem like say. it should get cooler as the temperature goes. Either that or it's sitting in a fan. And then what's uh, that's the, the humidity? Oh, that's oh the this is just the workload we're running on. This okay. is just a uh, sort of peg the uh, CPU workload. Okay. We're computing pi to ten thousand digits. Yeah. No. Did only ten thousand? Then we stop and start again. Oh. The, the goal is to basically run each CPU at 100%. It's a small little benchmark that runs entirely out of cache, and it runs, uh, it's very power hungry. Oh, it looks neat.